Now let's continue working on the body. So you'll see this is as far as I got. And one of the things that you might notice is the fact that there are a lot of polygons really on areas, especially like the chest and some of these open areas. And so that's one of the things that I want to talk about. And then there's one other thing that I want to talk about as we sort of keep going on this body. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the arm. So you can see I've started to come down and create geometry and I've got geometry that goes all the way around the arm right now. And so I could continue on kind of adding geometry like that and go all the way around. But once we get some geometry like that, we can use that technique that we talked about a little bit earlier where we extrude the border edge. We can use that to extend geometry down the arm. So if we look down under our keyboard mouse shortcuts, if you remember the tab middle mouse under the, uh, when you're hovering inside the quad mesh will allow you to extend a border edge, which we were doing it kind of out in the middle of open space and it extended out a few edges at a time. If we do it on a closed loop like this, we can actually extend geometry very quickly down the arm. So think about adding points and doing this all the way around every time. Instead of doing that, let's hold down tab and then we'll use the middle mouse button to just drag out a loop and then we'll drag out another one. And you can see each one of those is sticking to the surface. So we can very quickly get all the way down to the elbow. Now, once we get down to this open area, we'll need to modify things a little bit so we can come in here and start to move these around and figure out how we want to configure these. But having that ability to extrude out that border makes things really fast. Think about if we were to go in and add individual points to bring down the arm all the way down to the elbow, that's going to take quite a bit of time. You can always go in and continue to add individually if you want to, but we can now continue on from here. And for instance, we could come down here and start to make this a little bit more customized around the edge here. And then once we got past it, we could continue that process all the way down. When you get down to the end here, again, you're going to want to make this definition. So you're going to want to have a dot up here, one down on the lower level to make that vertical line. And then you can con continue down on both sides. So you're going to get that edge there. Okay. That you want to define that edge, top edge and the bottom edge on the claws. You want to do the same thing. So you want to have geometry on the claw itself and then up to the edge of the finger like that. So you basically have three planes here. You've got this plane where the claw is, you've got this vertical plane where it transitions into the finger, and then you've got the finger. Okay. And then you're going to bring yourself down. Now, as you do this, you're going to notice you're going to want to route geometry uh, into smaller and smaller areas. And the name of this tool is quad draw. And that's really what we're able to do here. So for instance, you know, on the arm, if I draw out three points, it's not going to let me create a triangle, even though we're making a game mesh and triangles are the lowest and most efficient way we can create a polygon. So can we get triangles? Well, we sure can. We just have to start with a quad. So let's say that we want to create a triangle. Like let's say up here, we had this coming in and we wanted to make this actually uh, make this point part of that. Okay. Well, we couldn't really make a triangle because by default, it's trying to connect four points, but we can go in, create a separate point, and then we can simply drag the point. And as we drag those points close, they'll snap together and we can create triangles that way. In addition, if you happen to create a hole that is a triangle. So for instance, if we come in here, make a polygon and snap this, and then, you know, snap that over. If you have a hole like this, then you can just hit shift and you can quickly fill that in. Now, one of the things that I like to do is in these open areas where we know it's not that efficient to have all of these quads in here, we don't need them all, but I will go ahead and create those just because it's a lot easier to create that nice edge flow. And then I can figure out, okay, where are the areas where we don't need all of that resolution? And then all you have to do to create triangles or to reduce the geometry is simply to start connecting things together. So you can just drag point to point 
And in those areas where you don't need the resolution, that will let you reduce that. Okay. A lot of times the areas where you'll need the resolution are places like around these curves, along the silhouette, you'll need extra points, but in areas along, you know, open surfaces, you're not going to need all of that resolution for the most part. And so you can very quickly dial that down just by clicking on a point and snapping it. So we can come in here and we can keep going on areas like the leg. And once you get the geometry all the way around the leg, for instance, here, we're sort of following along with that curvature of the leg, thinking about how it's going to deform and making sure that you have edges where you're going to want to have movement in your model. Okay. So we'll leave this edge flow kind of going around the inside here. And then we can connect this up kind of like that. Kind of move these down if it's a little bit too far apart. And then again, with our tab trick, hold down tab and a little mouse, and we can very quickly get some geometry going, you know, and you might have times where as you pull this down, you can see where it's getting, you know, part of it's getting pulled down further. Just pull it down and then clean up that area, move it where you want it to go. And in some cases you may have, when you do that, you may have points that appear sort of inside and there may be, you're not able to access them because they're a little bit too far inside. And so we're not seeing them. So you can always turn off the live surface and you can select your low res mesh. So in this case, this poly surface one, that's our retopo mesh right now. And so for instance, if you go to wireframe, you can see all of the points. If you grab those points, you can move them wherever you want because now there's no live surface, right? So you could move them off of the surface, do whatever you want. You could start with an imported mesh that you want to now start to retopo. We'll move these points out a little bit. Now we can come along the back. Kind of move those out. So you're treating this as really just a regular piece of geometry at this point. But if you want to go back into your quad draw mode, all you have to do is make sure that you turn back your, turn your live surface back on. Got, have your poly surface one selected and then simply activate your quad draw tool. And now you're back in this quad draw mode. And when you select these points that you just moved out, they're going to snap to that surface. And so that'll let you kind of clean things up. If you get some errors where you've got geometry inside other geometry, you can go in and kind of fix it up and you can see how some of those are snapping to those uh, other spots. And so you can kind of clean up the areas where you want to fix things. And now if you could extend it down as far as you want, you want to make sure that you have plenty of geometry around the joints. So we've got a few extra joints on this uh, character. We want to have, you know, make sure we have geometry along the elbow, the wrist, and the hip here, but then also the knee. And then we've got sort of a, a dog leg. And so we have the ankle up here down to the toes and the feet, or the foot and the toes. And so we have uh, several places where we want to be able to bend the geometry. So you need to make sure that you have some geometry there and you could connect it up. You can uh, work your way down. You could start here and kind of work your way up. Just thinking about the resolution that you need. You can always transition from a higher area of higher resolution to areas of lower resolution because we do have the ability to use triangles. It is a game mesh. And so after all, that's what we're going to end up with. And so we do have the ability to go in and create using those, which makes things a little bit easier, but you do want to get your, you know, as much of that detail in there as you can. So you can see that polygon was sticking straight through that geometry. And so I added another edge inside there to kind of get that silhouette a little bit closer to what we want. And then again, tab middle mouse, and you can start to extend that up along the leg. And again, I'll usually start with kind of a, a nice grid pattern and then down res from there. Just because quad draw likes to create quads, it's easier to quickly place them. And then you can go in and reduce where needed while still leaving the geometry along the edges where they'll be most useful. 
All right. So why don't you go ahead and continue down the arms and legs, filling in your uh, geometry here. You can use the border extrude or other techniques. You can always turn off your live object if there are issues with the geometry. Your object is just a polygon object that you can go in and move the points around. And then when you turn that live object back on, you're able to then snap those points back onto the surface where they need to be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the leg. We can take a look at that, what that looks like in the next video. And then we'll start doing some retopology on the head using some of the same techniques. And we've got the, the heads up display here displaying the, uh, the faces and triangles here that we're working with. And so that can help us determine kind of the resolution that we're working with. And again, like I said, this resolution isn't totally necessary. It's not too bad, but it's not optimal to get the shape that we want. And so we can certainly, once we get this, uh, go in and start to, you know, connect points together to triangulate that and reduce that a little bit. So we'd have triangles along some of the border areas where we want the curvature and then uh, reduce it in the areas where we don't things like up in here and so forth. All right, so we'll go ahead and let's continue on down the arm, continue on down the leg, and then we'll start working on the head next.